All right, here is an old friend, the iMac G3 350, the original slot loading iMac. I think I could probably get that faster by using the power zone like that. But we've got a slight problem here. Oh yeah, he's going back to the year 1904. And that would be because the CMOS battery is very definitely dead. So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to take this out, and I'm going to show you how to replace the CMOS battery in your iMac G3. This applies to all the slot loader models as far as I can remember. I don't think it applies to the tray loaders as those went together in a significantly different way. They had a significantly different chassis. So The motherboard layout was generally the same, but how to get there is definitely different. All right. So let's get started. So what you want to do first is you want to make sure that you can actually do this because you're going to have to lift this thing around and even though it's not nearly as well built as the tray loaders are, it is still a force to be reckoned with. There are two screws down here. You don't need a, a superb screwdriver like the one that I have here, but you do need a Phillips bladed screwdriver. That is one of the most important things. And if I remember correctly, you only really need one size in order to do this. You should also get a flat bladed screwdriver, but you can get pretty much anything for that. So we got two screws, they look something like this. Okay, the camera probably will not focus on it. Unless I put it in the macro mode. There we go. They look something like this. There's two of them. There's another one here, which tripod's in the way. Somebody should probably, you know, chastise me because I said I was never gonna use a tripod in a video. And you, here I am using a tripod in a video. Um, if you want to replace the RAM, you do not need to take the whole unit apart. That is going to be a waste of your time. I'm trying to find a, uh, a tool to do this, but you can see there is a door right here. I guess we're going to be total heathens and we're going to use a nail clipper in order to do this. All you got to do is turn that, theoretically anyways, this pulls down to reveal your RAM slots. So, if that's all you need to do, there's no point in taking this thing apart. But since we need to do more, well, we're going to have to go further. So as you saw those two screws, but they still won't come off. This is a VGA door. Now on an iMac G3 350 like this, and presumably some of the other earlier models, there's nothing under this door. But this is actually what they call a VGA door. Probably not going to be able to get this out of here like that. Well, here we go. Because there would be a VGA port theoretically right here. Well, obviously, this being an early one, it doesn't have it. My G3600 does have a VGA port. But there's a knockout in the EMI shield for it, but this model does not take advantage of that. And then, and you want to be careful with these because they are different lengths. There are two or four screws one, two, three, and four. Let me pull these out. Hopefully they're not torqued down too badly. One thing that you will definitely want to make sure of is that you've either got a magnetic screwdriver, if you're careful, or you've got a pair of tweezers because you can very easily lose screws inside this machine. All right. So we're getting some macro focus on this. This is the screwdriver from the outside. And this is the screw, or screwdriver's screw, sorry, from the inside. You can see they are both different. You don't even need a whole lot of focus to see that these are very definitely different. So you want to make sure you remember that. I've done this enough times that I pretty much know that off the top of my head. I've taken this thing apart so many times, it's unbelievable. and. I don't know if we'll get to see it in this video, but there is a reason why you would want to do this, even if you're not directly replacing the battery, you know, with a machine that you are getting for the first time. I'll talk about it if we don't see it, which I'm hoping we don't because it's rather unfortunate. So then you want to be very careful, pull it off, it just comes off like that. You might want to clean it, if that's your thing, and then... There are four more screws that we need to remove. I think there's, no, there's six. Sorry, there's six more screws. One, two. 
There's a third one here. There's another one on the other side, over here somewhere. Five and six. And I do apologize for the lack of focus, but you should be able to get something of an idea as to what I'm doing. I mean, it's not like it's a strictly you need to see this kind of thing. All these screws are exactly the same. Put in the manual focus. They look something, or macro mode. They look something like this. So that's what uh, all six of these screws are. And then being very gentle with this shield because you could break it and then you'll really ruin your day because these are expensive or you could break something that it's attached to we'll go ahead and pull the shield out and we can see what we want to see i think you can already see it there is your battery right there and one of the things that you really want to make sure of is that you remove these batteries when you first get the machines. And the reason for this is these are ticking time bombs. They will leak and in fact they're actually known for exploding, which is very serious. This one is wanting to come out. Always, always, always great. Batteries decide, I think I just broke that. Yeah, you want to be careful with these. They're, yeah, I just broke it. They're very easy to break. So don't do like I do. <laughs> um, hopefully it will still actually hold the battery. But I have two of them. They're exactly the same as the one that I just pulled out. I think so. Yeah, exactly the same. This one's hot. The code on the side is different. Of course. And you want to be mindful of polarity. The negative end goes to the top, positive end goes to the bottom. And just like that, your battery is replaced. No big deal. If you want to replace the hard drive, even though I already did make a video about this, the hard drive is down there. The only other direction that I'm going to give is to remove these RAM slots because this needs to fold out of the way in order to remove the hard drive. There are four screws. You can kind of probably kind of see them. One, two, three, and four. But you need to remove the RAM in order to get this to fold all the way back so you can pull the hard drive out. Other than that, the directions are pretty much the same. So I'm gonna put this back together and we're gonna give it a shot, see if it actually still works. And well, there you go. So that is how you replace the clock battery in an iMac G3 slot loading machine. Maybe not so much correctly because I did break that little uh, thing on the sides. This battery could probably fall right out. But hopefully it doesn't do that. Okay, now it is time to check over our work. So we'll go ahead and we'll fire the system up. The system needs new speakers as well. I probably should have done that while I had it apart, but it's not really going to matter for the purposes of this. Hopefully it will still boot. I know that the hard drive is also having trouble in this machine. Another thing I probably should have done while I had it apart, but no, I didn't. So I really don't feel like digging through my collection of hard drives right now. This is supposed to be a video for replacing the clock battery, not also a video of the installation of Mac OS 9 or the cloning of a hard drive or any of the necessary swearing that you need to do any of that. 
It'll start up like normal. So far, anyways. We will see that the date and time has changed back significantly. We can get some macro focus on that. It's probably about as close as I'm going to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, and then I am going to unplug it, and let it sit for a minute or two. And then we are going to see if it retained its settings, which hopefully it will do. If you did this right, that is what it will do, at least. Okay, so I've done that process, and now we are booting it up for the first time after, you know, unplugging and plugging it back in. So, with any luck, this will have actually functioned the way that it was supposed to. Man, it is a beautiful day outside. I really should be out there enjoying myself as opposed to working on a computer indoors. Alas, such as the things that you do when it's too damn humid outside. It really is. It's just absolutely unbelievably humid. And it's also unbelievably hot out there, probably mostly because of the humidity. And it looks like it has not retained... Well, it has, but it hasn't at the same time. We've gone to 4.53 p.m. for some reason. Probably because of daylight savings time. But it did retain that much. Date and time, 7-22-2017. 4.53, which is an hour ahead now. 7.22. So this process has worked admirably. And that is how you replace the CMOS battery in an iMac G3 slot load machine. Again, tray loaders are different, at least as far as taking the machine apart is concerned. But with any system that's got those little batteries, you know, the ones that look something like this, remove them. Because they are known to explode, and if they don't explode, they will still leak, and they will ruin your day. So, please just do that and you will save yourself a lot of headache and heartache, potentially. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.